Hi everyone, welcome back to another lesson. We're talking about new terminology and diagnostic criteria for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and other related liver conditions. So we're going to talk about some new names that some of these liver conditions are going to be referred to as and also how they're going to be diagnosed. Let's first talk about some of the old terminology with regards to this condition. So NAFLD was referred to as non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And it was a liver disease characterized by fatty infiltration of the liver tissue that is not caused by ethanol use. Now, this non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is the most common liver disease worldwide, and it affects up to 30% of the global population. And it's related to particular underlying problems like insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, genetic predisposition, and dietary factors. And what was normally the case was that there'd be a healthy liver, and the healthy liver would start to have fatty infiltration. This would be non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And then eventually that fat within the liver would become inflamed, causing inflammation and some damage to the liver tissue. This would be NASH or non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. And then this inflammation would cause enough damage where there may be fibrosis or maybe some scar tissue, or the inflammation could cause so much scar tissue that we would get cirrhosis. So this was generally how we categorized non-alcoholic fatty liver disease before. But there has been a recent global consensus on changing the name of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease to another name and also having a particular diagnostic criteria for that particular liver condition. So this comes from the article entitled A Multi-Society Delphi Consensus Statement on New Fatty Liver Disease Nomenclature. This was published in Hepatology in June of 2023. So now the way that these particular liver conditions are going to be diagnosed is by imaging and or biopsy findings that demonstrate hepatic steatosis. So hepatic refers to the liver and steatosis refers to fatty infiltration. So this is going to be similar to the previous non-alcoholic fatty liver disease criteria. So if we were to actually see imaging, say for instance on ultrasound or some other imaging modality or on biopsy, showing hepatic steatosis, this would be considered a steatotic liver disease or SLD. Now this is how diagnostic criteria is going to operate. If you see findings of hepatic steatosis, it is going to be one of the steatotic liver diseases. Now there are going to be multiple steatotic liver diseases. We're going to talk about each of them. One of them is going to be known as MASLD. This is actually going to be the new condition that has renamed non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. We'll talk about what this stands for in the next slide. Another one is MET-ALD. Another one is ALD or alcoholic liver disease. The other one is going to be cryptogenic SLD or cryptogenic steatotic liver disease and some other etiologies we'll mention briefly later on. And what has been changed with regards to the diagnostic criteria, especially with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, is that not only do we need imaging and or biopsy findings showing hepatic steatosis or this fatty infiltration, but we also need at least one cardiometabolic risk factor. So the cardiometabolic risk factors, we won't go into all the details here, but they get split up into adult criteria and pediatric criteria. A lot of these criteria are in common with metabolic syndrome. So if you have high BMI, if you have high blood pressure, or if you're on a anti-blood pressure medication or antihypertensive, if you have high fasting serum glucose, or if you have a high A1C level, or if you have type 2 diabetes, or if you have high triglyceride levels, or if you have low HDL cholesterol, each of these are going to be a criteria. And the pediatric criteria is going to involve individuals less than the age of 18. And for the most part, it's going to be very similar, but some of the numbers are different. So if you want to take a look and screenshot this or stop and look at some of these criteria to better understand the criteria that can be used as a cardiometabolic risk factor. And the reason that this is important is because the new diagnostic criteria requires at least one of these cardiometabolic risk factors to make the diagnosis of some of the liver conditions we're going to mention here in a moment. So if we were to look at the umbrella term of steatotic liver disease. Essentially, this is just meaning that there has been a demonstration of hepatic steatosis. It can be broken down into what used to be called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or NAFLD, which is now called the following, metabolic dysfunction-associated steatotic liver disease, or MASLD. So MASLD, or metabolic dysfunction-associated steatotic liver disease, is the new term we're going to start using for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And Subsequently, as I mentioned before, if there is inflammation in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, it would be called non-alcoholic steatohepatitis or NASH. But the new terminology in the case where MASLD leads to inflammation 
is going to be referred to as metabolic dysfunction associated steatohepatitis or MASH. So again, it's not going to be non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It's going to be metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease. And it's not going to be non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. It's going to be metabolic dysfunction associated steatohepatitis or MASH. So in order to have the equivalent of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is now, again, metabolic dysfunction-associated steatotic liver disease, we need at least one of those five cardiometabolic risk factors we talked about before. And then some of the other conditions that have been categorized within this new diagnostic framework includes alcohol-associated liver disease, or ALD. So this would still fall under the umbrella term of steatotic liver disease, or SLD. And this is going to be in patients who are heavy consumers of alcohol and have no cardiometabolic risk factors. Very important. In order to have ALD, there's no cardiometabolic risk factors at all. So it's just alcohol related. But if you do have both alcohol related liver damage and also at least one of those five cardiometabolic risk factors, you're going to essentially have MASLD plus ALD. And this is a new condition known as MET-ALD. So this is the new liver condition that has been categorized as patients who have at least one of those cardiometabolic risk factors and who consume a certain amount of alcohol per week. In females, it's those who consume at least 140 grams of alcohol per week. And in males, it's those who consume at least 210 grams of alcohol per week. So again, if we see imaging findings showing hepatic steatosis, we automatically fall into the category of steatotic liver disease. And then we have to do a little more homework. We then have to look at their cardiometabolic risk factors. If they have at least one of those, then they can either have MASLD or MET-ALD, depending on if they are also consuming alcohol as well. If they're consuming alcohol, at least these quantities we mentioned before, plus at least one of those cardiometabolic risk factors, they have MET-ALD. And if they don't consume alcohol, if they don't have a history of high alcohol consumption, and they have at least one of those cardiometabolic risk factors, then they're in this category of cases, MASLD or potentially MASH. And then furthermore, we talked about some other conditions that can fall in this category of steatotic liver disease. So if there is no cardiometabolic risk factor and no other cause, so there's no alcohol consumption, for instance, say if there's a patient who never has consumed alcohol, never had a history of heavy alcohol consumption, and they don't have any cardiometabolic risk factors, but they still have hepatic steatosis on imaging, for instance, this would be considered cryptogenic SLD. So this is a new category of liver diseases. And then the other etiologies that can fall in the steatotic liver disease category is drug-induced liver injury, or DILI. So these are some of the new diagnostic criteria, new terminology for some liver conditions we talked about in the past. So this is important to think about and to be aware of for future lessons. I hope you found this lesson helpful. Please check my lessons on liver disease and gastrointestinal conditions. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.